Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Yes, we're back and I've got the medallion and everything. We're back. I'm a sommelier again. But at what cost? Ah, uh, that's true. Tragedy. Tragedy. You think he's gone forever? Or is it like... Only time will tell. Uh, maybe he's not an eagle, maybe he's a phoenix. Yes, you don't know what we're talking about, it's in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, you know, we're coming back with a classic bourbon. Yeah. W.L. Weller. Sure, Weller's right? everywhere. You're now, infested with Wellers. Uh, the screw cap. You're infested with Wellers. The screw cap is like strike one, Weller. No, no, no. This no, is no, no, their no. I can strike. Line. I can strike. Even this is like. Their, the corks are cheap. Come on. Corks are cheap. This is their budget line. I So, I will readily admit, uh, and this is the wrong community to be saying this, I'm a little bit of a cork snob. And I feel bad. Well, I don't shit on people. I just did shit on people. Yeah, I'm yeah, a cork snob. Yeah, I'm a cork. <laughs> no, we're using we're using synthetic corks in ours. Okay, so here's but it's the thing. Not screw top. Originally, Weller. Oh, it smells really nice. Uh, William Larue Weller, W. L. Weller. He would be a right. Lover. He was one of the early bourbon distillers in oh. Kentucky. Yeah. 1825, 27, and uh, and. He was one of the first people, if not the first, to create the weeded bourbon instead of the rye-based bourbon. Mm -hmm. So this is a weeded bourbon. Now, eventually he was bought, right? Yeah. And it became what we know as Stitzel Weller. This is also the same company that makes Pappy Van Winkle. Mm -hmm. This is the Weller line. They've continued trying to stay true to the original Weller. Honey and molasses. Yeah. And I think it's a lower proof. One, because you said budget, but two... Uh, actually, even the 45 surprises me. I would have said like 40, 42, maybe. maybe it whatever. is much smoother. Uh, it's it's it, it it's got some nice notes. Well, I should say it's the molasses, and the honey, uh, yeah, and the thinness. Though I think if this was a little bit, it does smell shiny. Mm. Uh, I would say that normally when rye brings these sort of spicy notes to the nose, this one is bringing uh, all of these rounded. Kind of oily butter kind of notes to the nose. This has a really nice uh, oak note, but it's almost nose. floral. I, yeah, I really like the the nose. The really um, kind of the the old wood, the old oakiness. It's really nice. It still tastes kind of thin too. Yeah. It's very bright tasting, not quite brittle. Now you say budget. What do you mean by budget? I mean, well, different kinds of budget. At a point, you could get this for under thirty dollars, closer really? to twenty. Okay. Um, these days, it's often showing up at plus thirty. But if you have to spend forty for this edition, too much. You're spending too much money. Uh, this is special reserve. Is that one of those meaningless? It's things? just meaningless. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like a you know, a unique bottling. Of right. This. They just it makes it seem like something you should pick up. Yeah. Uh, in terms of a budget, I think under thirty. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of people because the same company is making this that's making the Pappy Van Winkle lines sure. and things like that. And the Pappy Van Winkles are also weeded bourbons from Stitzel Weller. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, different warehouses. This is one of the stronger Different molasses. parts of warehouses. Right. The barrels are aging and that changes everything. Okay. Um, now, I would say also from Stitzel Weller, one of my favorite bourbons in the world is Blade and Bow. And this is a little more shrill and spiky than Blade and Bow. I, I do get a really rich, like I think the, the prominent note for me on this is molasses mm -hmm. on the taste. Uh, a really nice old sweetened oak on the nose. Yeah, I get that. I did just for the first time after spreading it all around get a little bit of that classic cherry note. Yeah, but you're right, it is, it is bright. It does got some pointy bits. It does... Um, it feels soft. As bright as it is, it feels like it's got soft edges. Well, the beginning first half. Yeah. And then the aftertaste, that's where you start to find, you know, the things that aren't uh, rounded and smooth and soft. Yeah. Uh, that's where the bite the point is. But this is a damn good uh, budget. I think the Weller name has gotten so famous, it's hard to find this these days. Buffalo right. Trace is the company responsible for it now. Right. Um, I think there's other ones I would prefer. So, You've got comments over there if you want to sure, use Sure, no, I'm going to do the comments. Uh, and we would have a camera right here so we could cut to the camera. You could see the bottle. A certain Trash Panda didn't leave the card. Well done, Trash Panda. <laughs> uh, Michael Murici. Yeah, good luck with that one. Are there different sizes of Glencairn glasses? Yes. If, if yes, which one is the official size? There, so whiskey this... people, do you say Glencairn, they're going to think 
This. Yeah. yeah. And when you say Glencairn in the industry, people think of the small tulip shaped glass. I, the Glencairn also makes some ones that they anticipate being used for rocks. And they'll call them like Canadian whiskey glasses. Right. Or, no. And we have them in the shop that has the toast and the base of it. But uh, well, they're sold out. They make a handful of them. Yeah. But and everybody that wanted. Well, hell, we I ordered them. I don't even think the mass community even knows those exist because no, they, they sold out on the Patreon like in three hours. Yeah. Gone. We reordered them. So we'll have By the time more, this airs, and they then should be back we, in. We will unveil them to all of the tribe there. Anyway, there are a bunch of different sizes, but if you say Glen Karen Rex is right, this is what people picture. Yeah. Uh, let's do the Frederick. I'm just going to go Frederick Watney because there's a bunch of names in between that. <laughs> but I can do Frederick Watney. All right. Uh, how do you wash Glen Cairns? I've heard that you're not supposed to use soap, but it feels a bit unhygienic to nah, use soap. Use soap. That's bullshit. Yeah. You put them in a dishwasher for all you care. It's just a glass. Um, now, I tried to, uh, for my Glen Cairns, just because I don't like the glass still smelling like something, and a lot of detergent soaps for dishwashers, they use smells and salts and essences, and it makes your glasses have this lingering smell of cleaning stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why people say don't use soap, but if you use a non-smelling soap, it doesn't matter. Matthias Storm is 40% ABV, a good proof for aging. No! Whiskey. Does it need to be as high as 60%? Because No and no. That, <laughs> that proof will drop, so if it's below 40, it's not technically a whiskey. Yeah, but nobody pours whiskey into a barrel at 40% to age it, because it's going to be more water than alcohol. And uh, it's going to evaporate like crazy. Well, not more water than alcohol, but it will get very watery. Yeah, 40% is more water than alcohol. Really? Oh. Well, I mean, hold on a second. 40% 40 40 alcohol by volume. Okay, but. That's 60% water. But it's already more water than alcohol. Yeah. So, it's but not, it's what I'm not saying that is, the aging process makes it more water no, than no, alcohol. No, no, I'm saying going into the barrel, it will be more water than alcohol, which will cause the evaporation rates to skyrocket. Okay. Right? Especially in hotter climates. Mm. So, um, no, traditionally, you want to put it in somewhere between 112 and 120 uh, proof. Okay. Right? And the higher you go, 120s, you start pouring, pulling barrel bitter. And the lower, this is super generic, the lower you go, 112, 115s, you start pulling wood sugars and sweet notes out of the barrel. How often should you check the cask. If you're just doing like a small cask at home. Uh, it depends on what you're doing. If you're a large distillery where you're going to be blending 100 barrels at a time, you yeah. just plug it, leave it, don't think about it again. If you're a small distillery where every one of your runs has, you know, less than a dozen barrels, you may check in on those pretty regularly, like every few months. And uh, what you may do is add water back to it to proof it down to switch it to pulling wood sugars mm -hmm. or that you can do all kinds of things to it. Michael Andrews, do metal flasks affect the flavor of yeah. whiskey? Is there a limit to the length of time to store whiskey in a flask? I would say yes to part A and part B is affected by part A. So, uh, so in my experience with flasks, and I have four or five, right. and yeah. I use them regularly. So not all flasks are created equal in the, yeah. in the uh, production process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll have, um, you know, like the chemicals and the assembly line and the polish shit they do. Right. And if they don't clean it out really, really, really well. Then you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, but just if it's assuming clean metal. Yeah. Assuming you've already cleaned it. Right. Uh, if you leave it in there for a few days to a week, it's fine. If you uh, leave it in there for longer, it's going to start to taste slightly metallic. Think of it like this. Have you ever had a bottle of water I have. that you leave in a trunk of a car for too long? And then it gets hot and heats up, and then over. Then the next time you taste the water, it tastes stale. It's holy shit. Just a thing. You guys just missed out on that, but the trash can is like eighty-five percent obscured. It's just a thing I do. And Rex just sort of flicked the paper over and made it into the tiny potential opening, without even a backboard shot. You know, God, uh, he. he Gives gifts. <laughs> but not to all in equal measure. <laughs> God let's, loves some more than others. Let's just say I got a little <laughs> bit more than my fair share. <laughs> anyway, don't leave it in the flask for too long. My rule is use a flask when you anticipate drinking it that day. Yeah. But don't use a flask as a storage device. But it's not ruining stuff in there. If it's in there for a few days, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, I think... 
I think we're good. Yeah, pretty what do you damn think good. About this one? Pretty damn good for a budget. This is classic, man. I, I, uh, this would be a go-to for me. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.